Um, now uh, we officially know that Kick is owned by uh, Stake.com, which we already did for the record. Some dude dug into the LLC and found it once they once they made an iOS Kick app. Uh, they had to name their they had to name their legal entity. It's the least shocking bit of information that you could have ever found. Um, speaking of kick, I think Hikaru is joining one of the first six. One of the first six uh, uh, big guys that are supposed to be joining kick. Uh, kick originally announced it. And I think they announced it before Hikaru would. Now Hikaru can use Honstrat without getting banned. And then Hikaru literally said, he said, big, big announcement tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern on Twitch. And then uh, he was like, well, it's not, I didn't actually join Kick. He said he'd be streaming on Kick, but he's not leaving Twitch, but streaming in both places moving forward is clear. Kick is committed to my success. I hope to see you all on both. Thanks for always for your endless support. Um, remember, one really good thing that Kick is doing. One really good thing that Kick is doing is basically countering uh, what, like, for all. For all of my criticisms of Kick as a platform, uh, with respect to like moderation, uh, uh, for for you know, uh, you know, train wreck, uh, not really being too fond of myself. No matter what happens, Kick's existence is a good thing. Hasanabi Hikaru's chat is going to be filled with the most diverse and creative slurs ever devised. Yeah, we're going to find out anti-Asian slurs that haven't been uttered since like the Chinese Exclusionary Act. You know what I mean? Like, there's going to be so many ancient uh, tomes unearthed that, like, you hadn't even thought about. They're going to find incredibly unique and new ways to be super, super racist. Like, like I'm talking opium war era slurs. Yeah, like, what the fuck? That isn't even... Is that even a slur type shit? Um, so... Anyway, what I was going to say, though, is uh, that Kick is basically calling uh, Twitch's bluff by, you know, taking advantage of Twitch's non-exclusivity clause. Twitch made a gamble and said, well, we have no real competitors. It doesn't seem like YouTube gives a shit about live streaming. And uh, Microsoft's project failed. Facebook's project is virtually non-existent in the live streaming space. Facebook has a litany of its own, uh, you know, internal issues now. Meta, I mean. Mic Mixer failed. And uh, Meta is, is having a lot of issues, right? So go ahead. Go work with someone else. Especially because they thought the only someone else in the in the playing field was TikTok. And that would have been helpful for Twitch in general for discovery. But now that there's a new player that has basically unlimited funds due to uh, crypto gambling. Okay. Due to being backed by crypto gambling. You say Kick isn't a player and... I know. I don't think it is. But it will also be a platform that, that basically has the built-in mechanism of, uh, you know, constantly funding itself. There's an infinite money glitch there. It's called crypto gambling. Okay? So, I'm I'm glad that they are. Uh, I'm glad that they're growing. Like I said, I'm glad that they're growing. Uh, they took the bluff that Twitch made and are using it. 
towards driving an audience to their channel or to their platform and ultimately we will see what happens because this kind of thing makes uh, a platform like Twitch a little uneasy no matter what because on Twitch you run top of the hour ad breaks on kick I don't think you can run an ad break because ain't nobody's buying fucking ads on that platform as it stands, okay? Let's be real. Like, that platform has to run and operate at a loss permanently. Who in the ever-loving fuck is going to turn around and be like, let's buy some ads on the pornographic material uh, slur network, okay? Like, at the most, you're going to have... <laughs> At the most, you're going to have, like, some fucking gold coin ads or some shit, like, because this is even worse than fucking, even worse than, like, the Daily Wire. Uh, Rainy draws a lot. Thank you for the 50 gifted subs, allowing 50 people to no longer see the ads at the top of the hour. But given that there are no ads... Given that there are no ads uh, on there, or won't be as many ads on there, because the platform is just to uh, advertise uh, crypto gambling while simultaneously building like a competitor to Twitch, I suspect that this will at least, uh, this will at the very least uh, get Twitch to behave in different ways, especially if Kick has like exclusivity clauses or exclusivity contracts in the future. Speaking of which, by the way, I did debate you. Here's the three minute break now. Kick is basically operating as a loss leader for stake.com. Yeah. I saw a streamer showing just a little bit of butthole the other day. Just a little bit. That's funny. Just a little bit of butthole. Teeny weeny. I just want to know what Kig's long game is here because that gamble money isn't unlimited and they're going to try squeezing for profit eventually just waiting for the rug pull like we always will see. I mean, Gamba money is kind of unlimited if you're doing crypto. Unless crypto completely fucking tanks in its entirety, uh, people are always going to be looking for easier access to gambling. And they basically give you that. Now, of course, I mean, there's an there's a unlimited child slot market. Like, let's be fucking real. Okay. Like they have a lot of money. I don't know exactly how much, but a lot, like so much, so much fucking money. An exclusivity contract on kick is getting banned on Twitch. Yeah. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. I wonder if they, uh, will, will utilize the same thing that they used. Like I wonder if Twitch will use the same thing that they did for Aiden Ross on Hikaru. Hikaru, of course, is significantly more famous in traditional media than Aiden Ross is. And if they were, and he's an adult, so if they were to uh, ban him for, like, uh, not, I don't know, not moderating his chat well enough or anything like that uh, on, on uh, this other platform... They could use that. So, yeah. My guess is in the next few months, Aiden Ross clicks on a snuff link or some shit, and then they're forced to tighten up. I'm surprised it hasn't happened yet. They did it to Ninja 
yeah, they did it to Ninja, but like that was pre exclusivity claw. Like on Twitch back in the day, pretty much everyone knew you couldn't do like dual streaming. They opened that up while also simultaneously lowering the amount of revenue that you can get from subscriptions. So if they actually if they actually decide to take action against everyone that publicly goes to a different platform, the dual stream and shit, then they're kind of going back on that. And it would be fucked up. Twitch used to be so strict, they didn't even let you do anything besides gaming content. Had to be 80% of your stream. Twitch is cracked down. Twitch is always cracked down when needed. Yeah. Amazon is desperate for Twitch to turn a profit. They just laid off 20% of staff. I don't know. Might start making more desperate decisions. Um, I was having this conversation with some other people, but I think Amazon... Um. I think Amazon reducing his workplace is literally just another uh, monkey see, monkey do moment. It's just like the tech world is very stupid in many ways. Where, uh, and, and this is not my speculation, this is like Stanford economists believe that this is the reason why a, a lot of companies behave this way. Where like, they don't actually have to reduce their workforce all that much, but they'll do it regardless because other Companies in the tech industry are doing it. And when that happens, uh, when that happens, like shareholders start demanding uh, that your company does the same. So then uh, corporate executives have to cave to those demands. And that's part of the reason why they do it, even if they don't really have to do it. If you don't do layoffs, you have to prove your balance sheet is better. And of course, Twitch has like massive, at least the way that they reported it, Twitch is operating on a loss. You know what I mean? Like Disney is a great example of this, or one example of this, when Bob Iger returning as a CEO there were quite literally uh, people on the board pressuring him, like investors pressuring uh, Disney to engage in major layoffs. Now, obviously, there's external reasons as to why they had to, right? Like there are external reasons as to why, like, you know, uh, operational costs for facilities, COVID taking a uh, COVID, you know, taking a gigantic uh, COVID serving a gigantic L for places like Disney. And the reverse happens for a company like Twitch, where like there is, it expands a lot uh, during COVID. And then they have to engage in belt tightening, even though they don't necessarily have to do so. They end up doing it because big dog Amazon, big daddy Amazon is asking for that. Because Big Daddy Amazon still uh, cares about its stock prices, um, so they have to they have to cut back everywhere. 